In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create macros and presets in DaVinci Resolve 19. Yeah. Let's do this. I'm going to be showing you how to use the macro editor and navigate it and not get too lost because it's, well, it's quite a long list. But anyway, my name's Dan and you're watching Dan Vinci. Okay, with that all out of the way, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. So here on my edit timeline, I have a Fusion composition with a graphic that I've already made for another YouTube channel. If we go into the Fusion tab here, the first step, you, you wanna just highlight all the nodes in your node tree and then right click and then click Macro, Create Macro. I've labeled all the nodes that I want to be editable and changeable in the preset uh, just here. So it's Title 1, Title, Title 1, Result, Title 2, Result 2, Title 3, Result 3. And that all corresponds with each of these pieces of text here so that you can change them, right? When you click Create Macro, it'll open up this little macro editor panel. And this panel's really, really handy, although it could be better. It's a bit of a mess, I must say. Although they might have changed things in DaVinci Resolve 19. I don't know. But anyway, I digress. The first thing you want to do is definitely change the name of your macro. So in this case, I'm going to call it, what's it called? I'm going to call it CPU Cooler Key Facts Graphic. And what I tend to do, you don't have to do this, is just give it a version. Okay, so once you've labeled your macro, here comes the hard bit. Unless you've labeled your nodes and been an organized boy. If you have, congratulations, you'll be able to do this a lot easier. So everything in this list corresponds with the nodes that you've selected. So each one of these things is a node. So if we scroll down and find, oh God, this is gonna be embarrassing if I can't find it, title, there you go. Now, when you click the drop down arrow on title, so this is just a text node, you'll be greeted with an awful lot of stuff. What I like to do when I'm creating a new macro for a new graphic is I close all of these arrows here just so that I can see everything because when you open it for the first time it just opens everything and it's just a bit of a mess and you're like whoa dude there's a lot there so the first thing I definitely want to have is controls with the actual text because this is what we're here for we want to be able to control these specific titles and these specific you know facts right and a great way of showing you what these correspond to is actually opening the node in the inspector so if we go down to title which is this one here because it's labeled the same. So as you can see, style text is the actual text, font is obviously this, and style is obviously that, and then the colors here, the red, green, blue, and alpha is the color here, and then size is there, and you get the point, all of these are all of them. Personally, I'm a very visual person, and Blackmagic, if you're listening, please take this on board. I genuinely think that when you click down on these, it should just show this with like ticks on it, so you can just tick what you want, because visually that's just a bit more user friendly if you know what I mean but don't take offense this is still very good black magic is still very good please don't cry please it's okay <laughs> What I want to be able to do is customize what the text says. I want to be able to change the font, but if you don't want to change the font, that's fine. You can just leave that unticked. I want to change the style, which is obviously the like the bold or you know italic or something like that. And then size-wise, I like to be able to control the size because obviously if I was writing something that's a bit longer than this text here, I want to be able to shrink it down to fit this sort of space here. Great, fantastic. But what about movement? So in the event in the macro, I want to move the text and it's like over there and I want to be able to move it over to the middle. I think that's quite important and I think in your text graphic that you're making, it's likely that you'll want to be able to do the same. If we just shrink this here, if we go to layout, which is the same as this tab here, see, you, you know, it's not too complicated once you, you know, you look into it, it's not too bad. And then we just go down to center here because that's this one here and you can, you know, the, you can move the text on the X and Y axis. Um, and then that's basically it. I'm joking, there is a few more steps, but that's sort of basically it. You sort of want to repeat that process with the other nodes, for example, that involve text. So let's go down to here. Let's go down to style text, font, style, size, and then let's go to layout, center, and then rinse and repeat. Why did I pick the most complicated example? Okay, so once you've ticked and selected the things that you want and you're happy, what I like to do before I export the preset is just count all of the things that I've selected. So I've done seven different items. So how many nodes do I have here? Three, six, seven. Perfect. That's perfect. So now that I'm happy, let's move on to the next step. See the three dots in the top right? Click that. And before we go and just like export it and create a new macro, let's just save as and it will open automatically to the correct folder and just click save. What that basically does is just saves the macro and all the buttons that you've pressed because you know, it might have taken you quite a while to go through and click those things. It means that you don't really have to do it again. For some reason, I don't know whether they've improved it with DaVinci Resolve 19, but when you export it, sometimes it just doesn't work. <laughs> and I don't know why. Blackmagic, please in 
for me, but yeah. When it doesn't work, you can just go and just export it again quickly as opposed to just selecting all your nodes, going through all the ticks and going through all of the lists of things and yeah, saves you a lot of time. Once you've done that, click save as group. This will open the same folder again, but this is where things get a little bit complicated. And when I mean a little bit complicated, not complicated at all. <laughs> click on fusion, go to templates, go to edit, then go to titles. And then this is the folder that you're going to want to save all of your macros. Now, don't panic if you're doing this and the templates and edit folder or whatever aren't there. As long as you create the folders in the path order that you see on screen, I don't think you'll have any issues. And if you do, then something's really wrong. So there we go. So let's just save that. There we go. Save. Sometimes it just takes a minute. Sometimes it's immediate. Don't really know why. Again, black magic, please explain. Then close this and let's go into the edit page and then we should have a macro or preset, whatever you want to call it. So if we go into the effects tab in the top left corner, and then if we search whatever we've called the macro preset, so in my case, CPU cooler, there we go. There it is. Fantastic. Well, that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So let's track that in like so. And then we should have a broken macro. Now, this is exactly what I was telling you about. But when you export it, sometimes it just doesn't work. And I don't know why. But not to worry, all we need to do is go back into the Fusion page, right click on our nodes, click macro, and then there you go, there's the saved macro that I have there. It'll then take a minute to load, then just save as group, save, replace. Okay, so to fix that, all I did was export it again. For some reason, when you export it, it bugs out sometimes. My theory with this is, is that this node tree is quite big and maybe it's just glitching out as it has a lot of things to export maybe. Who knows? And as you can see here, so if we drag it out, we've got a nice graphic here and we can just, you know, change this to hello and change this to um, 4000, you know, and we can move it around like so and we can you know, change the font. You can do whatever you want and it's all within the inspector tab. And because we exported it as a group, if we open it in Fusion, you can actually open up the, the node tree here in a grouped node and make changes on the fly if you want, easy. But otherwise, that is pretty much it. That is how to make a macro preset in DaVinci Resolve 19. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave a little like and subscribe because you know, this channel is incredible. I'm not biased at all. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.